Hi there, this is Nick Marchese with the Cloud Asta training video. Today we're going to be focusing on Google Calendar building and resource calendars. Um, so that way we can show you the ins and outs of how to set up and use buildings and room resources uh, in your Google Calendar environment. Maybe you have a physical building that has reservable spaces. Maybe you have uh, 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 other assets that you would like to be uh, reservable. Um, such as vehicles or uh, laptop carts or anything like that. We're going to show you how to set that up here today. Just to note, there's a great Google Workspace help article about this. If you search for Google Workspace buildings or resources um, that goes through all this as well. We're going to go ahead and take you through it here. All right, so the first thing is to get to the admin console. And on the left side, you go to directory. And then you'll see a little bit down, you have this buildings and resources. So this buildings and resources piece is going to give you a couple more options underneath. See overview, manage resources, room insights, and room settings. So we're gonna just jump into manage resources here. So uh, there's a couple different ways that you could do this. We're gonna do this one at a time so you can see how to set it up. But if you wanted to do this in a bulk upload, you could do that as well. So you can click that bulk upload button. You'll get some information there about how to go ahead and get that bulk upload to happen. And then you can download a blank CSV template that looks something like this. And you can fill that in. Um, and then you can go ahead and upload it there. That might help you if you've got all that information. Um, but if you're just doing one at a time, you can do it uh, one at a time here. So the first thing we need to do is actually make buildings for our resources. So I'm gonna click the buildings and same thing, we could bulk upload all of our buildings if we like, but today we're gonna to be doing it manually. So I'm gonna add a building um, and we're gonna do some fictional um, buildings here, right? So we're gonna do Hoth base. I'm gonna type in my name. If you would like to put it in a description, it is chilly here. Um, and then here we have how many floors and what floors are they? So what are their names, right? So we could put uh, here we could put um, let's do uh, lower level, ground, and uh, outside. I'm just making something up here. If you want to put an address in, you can, but you don't need to. I'm going to add building. For these floors, you could put anything you want in here. We'll do something a little bit more common in a moment. Add building. Okay, so we've got our building set up. We can add one more building. All right, let's do uh, another one here. Let's do the Death Star. And we'll do lots of different floors. So we'll do one, comma, so these are just comma separated, two, three, four, five, six. How many floors are on the Death Star? Probably a lot. Eight, nine, ten. We'll do ten floors. Uh, we'll hit add building. Okay, so we've got two buildings here. Now what I'm gonna do is either on my sidebar or at the top here, I'm gonna to toggle back from buildings over to resources. All right, so now I see I have buildings here on the left side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and buildings, if you're noticing, can really be anything. They're a place to house the resources. It doesn't need to be building in the traditional sense like Death Star and Off Base, um, but you can, you can if you like. So I'm gonna hit this little plus here, hit add new resource, and it's gonna give me some information I have to fill out. So by default, uh, what is the category of this space? Is it a meeting space? Um, or is it uh, another resource, maybe a projector or a vehicle or something like that? Or you can not set a category. So we'll leave it as a meeting space. Um, if you wanna put a more description, like a type in there, you can, but you don't need to. <coughs> we'll start with our Death Star on floor, let's go to floor five. Um, if I wanna put a floor section in, I can. I'm gonna put um, uh, evil meeting room, uh, capacity of 10. Uh, if I wanna put in some more details here, I can, but I do not need to. You can do an uh, external uh, description for uh, end users or an internal uh, description here. Um, and this piece for room release, um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, long story short is that gives you the ability to have rooms um, when the reservations are uh, canceled by the person who reserved them, the room can be released and refreed uh, so other folks can book it again. 
So I'm gonna hit, I put in my, well, I chose my category, I put in my name, I chose my floor, I chose my building, and I chose my capacity, add resource. All right, let's add a few more just so we have some in here. We'll add another one to the Death Star so we see a couple of them. Um, so we'll in here, we'll do uh, loading bay, and that has a capacity for uh, 200. And we'll do one more there. Let's do uh, uh, private quarters. Okay, and then we'll add some for our other building. The hot base, right? We do our loading bay. We can make that on the ground level. Again, that could be maybe 100. Again, this is all very fictional. Um, but we can go ahead and say it's whatever you like. Um, and for hot base, we'll do in the lower level, we'll do a secret planning bunker. I'll just be with 15. Okay, so we got a bunch of different resources in here. Um, so, right, so what's the hope and the dream for this, right? So, if you have a conference room, if you have a projector, if you have something that a, a vehicle, a van, a shared company vehicle that you need to go ahead and um, schedule out that way there aren't conflicting reservations for that thing having this available for end users to reserve via Google Calendar and to be able to see what the availability looks like is really really helpful okay so we have this set up in here um, we can just show you some of these other pieces before we see what it looks like on the inside so for overview you can see a little bit here of all different things we were in resource management room insights will give you an idea of how much the usage is. Obviously, we just set these up, so they haven't been used very much. Um, and these are those global room settings that we were kind of talking about. So let me just talk you through these. Rooms are released for declined events, uh, which means it releases a room, meaning it makes it available again, and all but one attendee declines the event. Um, if you want to go ahead and set up uh, different rooms that are exempt from the room release uh, function, you can go ahead and add that there, um, or different groups that you want to go ahead and exempt from this as well. Um, you have that there. Um, you also have this automatic room replacement. So when a room declines a meeting invitation, the room uh, will automatically be replaced with another room in the same building with comparable size or equipment. This might be something you want. It might not be something you want because you know your spaces or uh, better than uh, we do. So careful with this one. If you want to toggle it off just to be safe for now, you can do that. Um, I'm going to leave that off so that way we don't go ahead and mess things up for us today. Okay, so I'm going to pop over to Google Calendar. Let me see what this looks like. <clears throat> so I'm going to set up a meeting uh, for tomorrow. So let's set up a meeting for tomorrow morning. Um, this is a, a secret uh, meeting about the future. And I now, as a user, can go down not to the location where I can type it in manually, but I go add rooms. If I click add rooms, I now have a couple of different things. So if I hit browse all rooms and resources, I see two buildings here that we set up, right? Death Star and Hoth Base. And if I open those up, I can go ahead and see what's available. Okay, so if I wanna choose private quarters, loading bay, uh, right now it's just me, so I probably don't need to book the whole loading bay, right? But I can go ahead and select the private quarters. I can go ahead and hit back. You can see that it is added here for me, um, and I can go ahead and hit save. So now, if I go to that calendar event, I see I have that room attached to my calendar event um, and it's booked there. So now if I were to go and book another meeting for tomorrow, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'll switch to this view for a moment. I want to make sure that I need to be in the, the secret quarters or the private quarters. Um, if I select that option for that uh, room resource, you could see here in yellow that it is already booked. So I could not go ahead and add another event at that time tomorrow. Uh, if I do that, you see it. If I, if I selected it, it will be crossed out because it's already booked by somebody else. This way, there won't be those overlapping reservations and folks will only be able to book what is available. So this is kind of one of those big perks of having this 
So that way you know when things are available and when they're not and being able to easily see the calendar for each of those spaces here right on Google Calendar overlaid with your events that are going on. Okay, so uh, for you as the admin, the big thing to do is to go into your admin console um, and go into manage resources, set up your buildings, set up your resources, and then start communicating with your uh, domain or your employees. Um, hey, if you wanna go ahead now and start booking uh, different rooms or different resources, you could do so via Google Calendar, see it there. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show off here is if I go, if I just wanna browse all of the availability for a space, there's a couple ways I can do that. Obviously I can go and make a new event and see it that way. But if I want, I can go scroll down on the left side here where it says other calendars. Click the little plus, click browse resources. And now I see this drop down of the two buildings I made. I can go ahead and select either of those. And there's a few things here. So there's two options to be able to see this. The checkbox is going to subscribe that calendar to your other calendars feed. That way you can easily toggle it on and off whenever you like. If you just wanna look at something one time, uh, just for a moment, you can click this little eyeball to get the public page. So if I click that page, it's gonna open up a new tab and I can see the entire calendar, just the calendar for that particular room. Um, and see my week view, my month view. And this is a nice easy way to just see this space's availability. If I ch click this checkbox, it's going to add it to my calendar list. So if I go back, um, it, for you as an admin, it'll show up under my calendars, but uh, for everybody else, it'll show up under other calendars. It is now a toggleable calendar that you could toggle on and off to see the availability for that space. So if there's a space that you need to see often and you want to see it there, you can leave it toggled on. Um, if it's this thing that you only wanted to look at one time, you can click the eyeball. Um, if you add something here that you don't want to see anymore, you click that little X on subscribe and now it's no longer in your list. Okay, have so much fun with Google Calendar uh, resources and bookings. And if you need any help, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to assist.